Okay, everyone, today we're going to talk about this theorem called Bayes' theorem. And let's take a moment to read this problem and then see what, what we have. So in Science Magazine, we have ovarian cancer scenarios going on. Though dangerous, it's rare, and affects only 1 in 5,000 women. And as I read this question, I am going to put probability notation with all the numbers that I see. So the probability of ovarian cancer is 1 out of 5,000. That's what these numbers tell me. The test is highly sensitive, able to correctly detect the presence of ovarian cancer in 99.7% of the women. So it's able to correctly detect it. So what does that mean? That means it correctly, so get a positive test, given that they have cancer already. That happens in 0.9997. That's what this statement here says. Given can or they they've tested positive, given they have the cancer. That's what it says. However, it is unlikely to be used as a screening test in the general population because the test gave false positives five percent of the time. So false positives. Well, that means that I got a positive result given that they did not have cancer. And that happens 0.05% of the time. So why are false positives such a big problem? Well, that's more of a uh, philosophical question. False positives are a big problem because 5% of people who go in there will be told they have the cancer and they don't. And that could be quite problematic in life. Okay, so now we want to draw a tree diagram and determine the probability. So what we're asked to find, we are asked to find the probability that a person who tested positive using this mess actually has cancer. So that means I want to find the probability of someone having cancer given that they tested positive. This is what I want to find. And so what this is, a clear case of what is called Bayes' theorem. And I'm not going to talk about Bayes' theorem yet, I'm going to make a tree diagram to do this problem. I often think of these problems as reverse conditional questions. So here's one way the conditional, positive given cancer. Here's the reverse of it. They switched around. So I'm going to make a tree diagram here. And so my first event is going to be I can have cancer or I can't have cancer. It's one or the other. One in 5,000 has cancer. So 4999 over 5,000 do not have cancer. Now, if I do have cancer, I could test positive given I have cancer, or I could also test, oh, or I could test negative if I have cancer, because this is the cancer branch. Similarly, I could test positive if I do not have cancer, or I could test positive or ne negative given I do not have cancer. And so from these numbers, I know that positive with is this is 0, 0.5, so this is 0.95. This is 0 0.9997, so this is 0 0.0003. Okay, so now, if I want to find the probability of having cancer given that I have tested positive, well, if I've tested positive, that means that's this branch and that's this branch. There are two possibilities to test positive. And so if I'm going to look for the probability of cancer given I tested positive, using our definition of conditional probability, we know it's the probability of cancer and positive over the probability of testing positive. Well, when we look at our tree, our tree diagram, when we go in this direction, this is the probability, this is the probability of cancer and positive. This is the probability, this branch here is the probability of cancer and negative. And this is the probability of, oh, of uh, not cancer and positive. And this branch will be the probability of not cancer and negative. Oh, okay. So if I want probability of cancer and positive, that's the top. If I want the probability of positive, those are the two yellow branches. 
So let's put this together. The top one is going to be 1 over 5,000 times 0.9997. 0 0.9997. Divide that by, well, now I have to do the yellow branches that I have. This one is positive, and the second one is positive there. So it consists of 1 over 5,000 times 0 0.9997 plus the 49905,000 times 0 0.05. 0 .05. So this is the problem of having cancer given I tested positive. And this here says there's a lot of people who do not have cancer but they also tested positive. Throwing this in my calculator. So as you can see, when I do the probability, it ends up that less than 1% of the people have cancer when they test positive. So that's 0 0.00398. So there, there would be very few people that would actually have cancer even though they've tested positive. And so even though this test is very reliable in catching people who have cancer, it catches too many people that do not have cancer. And that is the scenario of Bayes' theorem. Bayes' theorem always works where you're looking for a reversed conditional and you're taking and you're using the theorem that applies. So here's what your formula booklet says. It says, here is your Bayes' theorem. When I break it down, this here is the probability of A and B. This here is the probability of A and B plus the probability of not B and A. And so it looks and which are the branches to our tree. And so when I generalize it to all the possible, when if I have many multiple events, it's the successful event divided by all the unsuccessful, all the events that were the second part A could happen. And that is Bayes' theorem in a nutshell. I rarely ever use this formula. I usually go to the tree diagram and just do the reverse conditional and work it all out intuitively.